Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, I welcome you to the uh, lecture number 24 of the course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So, today's uh, lecture is lecture number 24 overall, uh, but it is third lecture of module 8. So, uh, today we will talk about the concept of you know, sustainable happiness with intentional activities. So, before we talk about today's lecture, let me briefly uh, give you a recap of uh, the last lecture that is lecture number 23. So, in the last lecture we have discussed a model uh, called a sustainable happiness model uh, proposed by Sonja Leibomirsky and, and her colleagues. They proposed it in 2005. Uh, so, we discussed this model in the background of two line of research. In one line of research shows uh, you know that you know there are certain inherent barriers in our system uh, for increasing happiness level. So, uh, such as our genetic set point or our genetic composition and hedonic adaptation. So, these two are major barriers which uh, and genetic set point is also related to our personality traits. So, genetics, personality traits and hedonic adaptation, uh, they are kind of acting as a barrier in increasing our sense of happiness or our experience of happiness. So, we are not able to sustainably maintain because of these factors our uh, experiences of happiness level or subjective well-being. However, another line of research that showed that you know it is possible to increase our uh, happiness level and maintain it sustainably uh, in various intervention studies. So, in the background of this two line of research, uh, we have discussed a model called sustainable happiness model. Uh, which talks about three important factors or determinants of happiness. Uh, these are you know genetic set point, life circumstances and intentional activities. So, this model proposes about 50 percent is kind of contributed by you know genetics or you know our emotional and uh, happiness level is contributed by genetics. About 10 percent is contributed by our life circumstances and about remaining 40 percent is contributed by intentional activities. Uh, although there are some criticism to these percentages, uh, so these are not exact, should not be taken as an exact percentages, but these are more of an indicative percentages from the population that was taken. So, uh, we have discussed these three uh, determinants and uh, uh, typically we discussed you know a genetic set point uh, is basically about you know how our genes set certain limits uh, and creates a baseline level of happiness. So, there are individual differences you might have seen uh, that some people are generally more happier, some people are generally more you know uh, emotionally in terms of sad they remain most of the time. So, which could be contributed by our genetic composition. Uh, then we, uh, with the second factors are life circumstances are typically you know includes incidental, but relatively stable facts of our life, uh, which could include the area or regions or the country or the geo geographical location of your residence or you know, birthplace, uh, demographic factors, your personal history, uh, your life status variables such as marital status, your income, health, etcetera. So, all these are basically incidental, but these are mostly a stable facts of our life and research generally shows the, uh, our life circumstances do not contribute to a very large extent to our happiness level uh, and most of the research shows this. Uh, contribution of uh, life circumstances in the variance of happiness in a population is most is can be is range from 8 to 15 percent. So, it is not very uh, strong uh, predictor. Uh, one of the reason could be you know that we get 
adapted to life circumstances even though some changes happens but we then quickly adapt to them then the third set of factors that we have discussed are called intentional activities are basically conscious activities that we do uh, in our uh, you know, life throughout our life occasionally or on a daily basis uh, various activities or practices that we do in terms of you know how we think and how we act so basically you know it was defined like you know a life circums how we act on our life circumstances are basically intentional activities you know is defined by that uh, so uh, then we have discussed you know the intentional activities can be of three types so one is you know, you know behavioral activities cognitive activities and volitional activities uh, and then uh, basically we have discussed you know uh, that despite the variants of genetics and hedonic adaptation uh, it is the intentional activities which gives a, a very significant and a logical route uh, to increase our happiness level because intentional activities are something it is in our control. Life circumstances, genetics are not mostly beyond our control. Uh, we cannot do much in terms of changing them, but intentional activities by definition are the activities that we choose to engage in and we uh, do uh, consciously do them. Uh, so, we can control them. So, therefore, uh, it is one of the important significant root or intervention where no uh, or possible intervention where we can change our happiness level and maintain it sustainably. So, today uh, we will uh, you know, kind of carry on from that uh, concept and we will elaborate more on the concept of intentional activities. Uh, because it is important to understand it because it is the main important determinant where we can really make changes and uh, you know and uh, consequently we can you know sustainably increase our happiness level other factors like genetics and life circumstances are mostly beyond our control and uh, therefore let us uh, understand more about uh, the concept of intentional activities in little bit more elaborate ways so today we'll talk about intentional activities and uh, how it is related to hedonic adaptation and how to use intentional activities for increasing our happiness level and then and then at the end we will talk about uh, positive activity interventions. So, let us see. So, uh, intentional activities as the basis of sustainable happiness you know. So, a sustainable happiness model which we have discussed in the last lecture uh, indicates that intentional activities are offer the greatest you know they offer the greatest potential to sustainably increase happiness you know simply because it is in our control other factors are not in our control unlike you know genetics and circumstantial factor so intentional activities are generally we have defined it in the last class also and just to remind uh, you uh, are effortful actions and practices that include variety of things people think and do so, it includes what at your thinking level, it could be at the cognitive level or it could be at the behavioral level. So, varieties of thinking processes and varieties of the actions that we do uh, are included under intentional activities. So, when we are talking about intentional activities here, we are talking typically uh, those activities which are uh, you know uh, significant in connection to increasing our happiness level. Uh, intentional activities you know could be you know activities which may increase our suffering also because there are many activities which uh, may not be suitable for happiness or for increasing our subjective well-being or happiness but here we are talking about specifically those activities which are uh, you know significant for enhancing our happiness level or our well-being so intentional um, that means effortful or people choose to engage so these are effortful and people generally has a choice in it so, for example, you know, uh, activities such as gratitude, optimistic, optimistic thinking, pro-social behavior, these are some of the examples of intentional activities uh, that can enhance our happiness level. We will talk more about, you know, specific activities such as gratitude, optim you know, uh, acts of kindness in the upcoming uh, modules where we will talk specific activities in more details. Here we are talking intentional activities collectively as a you know, group of activities. So, one important question happens that you know generally it, it was found that you know uh, people get you know 
adapted to life circumstances. Even though there are changes, positive changes or negative changes, there is a uh, very uh, strong hedonic adaptation to life circumstances. Can hedonic adaptation also happen to inten intentional activities? No. If hedonic adaptation happens to intentional activities, then I mean it is not an, uh, a very important or significant you know uh, area where we can really you know uh, use it to increase our happiness level. So this is an important question that what about hedonic adaptation of intentional activities? Do you also get adapted to intentional activities also? How are they different from life circumstances? So, as we have seen life circumstances really do not contribute much to our happiness primarily because we get adapted to them. So, do you also get adapted to intentional activities, activities that we consciously do and you know put effort to you know bring about certain activities in our life, uh, do you also get adapted to them? Uh, if so, then how they are different from life circumstances. Now. Uh, Sonja uh, Leibomirsky and her colleague in the uh, 2005 uh, paper where they discussed this model, you know they suggested that uh, hedonic adaptation uh, to some extent can happen to even intentional activities also, uh, but, uh, but uh, the effect seems to be much weaker in case of intentional activities. So, hedonic adaptation is much weaker and uh, the effect of hedonic adaptation is much less in case of intentional activities. So, what could be the reason behind it? Uh, let us explore. <coughs> so, what are the, uh, there are two specific advantages of hedonic adaptation, uh, so intentional activities, uh, which makes it less resistant to, you know, uh, it is, it, uh, which makes it uh, more resistant to hedonic adaptation. So, because of these two important qualities, we are less likely to get adapted to intentional activities. One reason is that intentional activities are episodic in nature. What is the meaning of episodic in nature is that you know uh, uh, life circumstances if you see you know they are mostly kind of constant facts of your life you know it is a kind of constant undercurrent or background in your life you know it is already always there. When something is constantly in your life we generally get adapted to them because for how much time you can really think about something which is constantly going on in your in your life. After some time you simply get adapted and you do not think much about it. We get habituated to them. So, that is the meaning of adaptation. But in the case of intentional activities they are generally episodic because you are doing some activities you cannot do it all the time. So, sometimes we do some activities uh, and uh, they have certain positive impact in our mind or they enhances our sense of subjective well being. So, generally they are transient and episodic. Sometimes we may do maybe you know once in a day or maybe you know once in a week or sometime or some kind of activities you know uh, which we do. Uh, for example, you know uh, generally you know some people you know engage in the practice of cultivating gratitude which basically means basically means you express your sense of thankfulness to people. So, we do not do it all the time. Sometimes you may do express your gratitude maybe once in a week or sometimes uh, you know in a certain period of your time when you encounter certain people. So, this episodic nature makes it you know uh, less likely to be get adapted to that. So, it is not a chronic or permanent aspect of one's life. When you are doing an effortful activity it cannot be all the time, it has to be some time only. So, people engages in them only in certain time therefore, we are less likely to adapt to a transient episodic activities. For example, experience or practice of gratitude sometimes. So, we, we may practice gratitude, but we cannot do it all the time obviously. So, it, it is mostly an episodic thing that we do. So, we will talk about more about the practice part uh, later. So, intentional activities are generally episodic unlike life circumstances which is a kind of constant background in your life. Second important characteristics of intentional activity is that you know it is varied in nature. So, in the sense that intentional activities are not that same thing you are doing all the time and every day, then we are likely to get adapted. So, generally we can change it because it is in our control. So, for example, by practicing gratitude you can change the way you kind of express gratitude. Sometimes you can express gratitude by talking to someone directly and you know, expressing your thankfulness for whatever 
positive things that person has brought into your life, you express your gratitude towards that person. Sometimes you may just write a letter of gratitude. Sometimes you may just text it. So, you can uh, express your gratitude in varieties of ways. So, therefore, we are less likely to get adapted to them because it is in our control. Uh, we need not do it in the same manner all the time. So, when something is varied, we are less likely to get adapted to them. When something is constant and same, then we are more likely to get adapted to them. So, this uh, nature uh, reduces um, reduces adaptation as we are less likely to adapt to a variable or changeable stimuli or activity. So, for example, we can vary ways of expressing gratitude such as writing or speaking. So, the, because of these two important characteristics, uh, we are less likely to get adapted to intentional activities. Therefore, it is very important and, and significant pathways by which we can increase our happiness level by practicing certain intentional activities in order to sustainably maintain our uh, happiness level. So, how can we use intentional activities uh, for increasing happiness? So, now you understand the intentional activities are you know, very significant for increasing happiness, but how can you use it? So, obviously, we will talk about specific activities later on. Now, we are talking about you know collectively uh, about intentional activities as a group of activity. So, while we discuss specific activities, you will uh, like you will understand more about you know how to do one specific activity. Here, see some of the general features. So, how can we use uh, intentional activities for increasing our happiness? So, if happiness is rooted in intentional activities, as uh, a lot of research indicates, uh, what activities should we do? What kind of things we do do under intentional activities to enhance our happiness level? So, according to um, Sonja Leibomirsky and her colleague in the same paper, uh, where they proposed their model, uh, they uh, propose that for the best result of any uh, happiness intervention, diagnosis of person activity fitness is very essential. You know, so not all same activity cannot be beneficial for all people because in if people differ in their temperament, in their values, in their belief system, in their you know motivation. So, individuals are different. So, you cannot, we cannot subscribe just do one activity and it will be good for almost everybody. There may be some certain activities which, which could be you know uh, beneficial for almost everybody, but most of the activities you know may not be suitable for everybody. So, people differ. So, this fitness between the person and the activity is very important, whether this activity is suitable for that person or not. Are they matching with each other activity and the person? If it matches, then it will be uh, the beneficial to, for, to that person. Otherwise, it may not bring about those positive changes as intended. So, any particular activity uh, may not be suitable for all person. Uh, people have different strengths, interests, values that will predispose to benefit more for, from some activities than others. So, certain predisposition and personal characteristics are there that will determine which activity is suitable for one person and uh, which activity is suitable for another person. For example, you know people who are very extrovert may benefit from outgoing activities and connecting with others as compared to an introvert. So, as we have discussed extrovert is a personality characteristics where people who, who are extrovert basically they are very outgoing, very social. Uh, they are more lively and more gregarious in nature, you know, they always like to be among mm, around people, they like to connect with people. So, people who are very extrovert, you know, they may benefit from activities which is connected to, you know, uh, uh, social activities or where, you know, they have the opportunity to connect with people. So, it could be any social activity, social welfare activities, you know, extroverts are more likely to be benefited from those activities. As compared to an introvert who is, who, who is not outgoing, uh, who more prefers to live in his own personal, his or her own personal world. Such people may benefit from other type of activities, you know, which are maybe, you know, creative individual uh, activities which they prefer. So, depending on the personal characteristics, uh, uh, certain activities can be suitable for some people and it may not be suitable for other people. So, this person activity fitness is very important. How can we do this person activity fitness? 
So, uh, according to uh, Leibomirsky, uh, she also kind of uh, you know proposed certain ideas to how to do this fitness you know, while you understand how to find out which activities are suitable for you. Uh, you need to uh, focus on these three important aspects. One is you know you need to find out fit with the source of your unhappiness. So, one thing is very important you know people are unhappy for varieties of reasons. So, there can be you know hundreds and thousands of reasons for becoming unhappy you know. So, people really you know are diverse in terms of you know sources of unhappiness. So, one need to find out what is the source of your unhappiness, why you are unhappy for most of the time or what is the major reason or main source for which you are kind of you know becoming unhappy for you know a lot of time for most of the time. So, this self reflection is very important in order to find out which activity will be more beneficial for you to remove your unhappiness. Source of unhappiness you need to find out. So, here it is kind of very individual exercise self reflective exercise then one, one need to do. So, if you look deeply you will find out why what is the reason behind it. Sometimes the reason could be you know probably in something in your environment or in your you know in the social circumstances, but mostly the reason could be something in your mind. How do you look at the world? How do you process information? If you remember this ABC model you know external circumstances they do not really directly influence our emotions. It is our thought processes. How do you interpret an event? How do you take an attitude towards the circumstances? That plays very important also. So, find out what is the reason behind it. So, finding the source of unhappiness and matching it with the activity uh, addresses the specific source in that way you can find the best activities for this. For example, you know a pessimist may benefit from cultivating optimism. So, some people uh, are maybe you know their source of unhappiness could be most of the time they are they are thinking in a very pessimistic way for whatever reason they kind of get conditioned to think negatively and, and most of the people a lot of people are kind of. Uh, we become very uh, pessimistic very soon whenever something happens negatively and automatically uh, thought becomes very negative. So, positively some, some people are much more pessimistic as compared to other people. So, if somebody is very pessimistic, so a lot of his unhappiness is connected to that pessimistic thinking. So, cultivating something like optimism could be very beneficial in that context to root uh, kind of eradicate the root of uh, unhappiness. So, uh, I mean uh, uh, so, because intentional activity like cultivating opti optimism will require efforts, it will not happen automatically by definition intentional activity means that. So, cultivating such thing requires certain efforts and motivation uh, to kind of you know eradicate what is within you or some problems that are there. So, one thing is you need to find out the sources of unhappiness and match your activity with that source that is one of the way to match it. Second is a fit with your strengths. So, person activity fitness uh, can be done by identifying strengths and talents. Another thing is that every individual has so many strengths and talents you know everybody will have certain strengths and talents in their life and uh, you can use those talent it is always better to use those strengths and talents more and more to increase our happiness level. And in order to do some intentional activities, you can use your strength and talent to express those intentional activities. So, that also enhances the effectiveness because you are it is in line with your strengths, then you are you will be more happy in doing it, you will be more motivated in doing it. So, for example, a creative person may express love and gratitude through painting and writing. So, he is using his strength of creativity in terms of painting or writing and expressing. Uh, certain intentional activities like you know expressing love and gratitude which will stimulate positive emotions and happiness. Uh, so, his strength is also used so he will be more motivated to do it. So, fitting with your strength is also very important. Then uh, the, the, the last one is fit with your lifestyle. Some it is also important because you know um, you, you may not be able to do all kinds of activities simply because our lifestyle has certain constraints if you have a very hectic schedule you will not be able to find too much time to do lengthy things. 
um, and uh, so depending on your lifestyle you need to choose some activities uh, so i'm here mostly talking about activities in general specific things we'll talk later on so um, you can choose sh activities which re require short duration of time uh, so for example also it also depends on your uh, orientation for example if somebody is very spiritual person or doing some spiritual you know exercises then he may choose activities accordingly for example doing uh, meditations and prayers could be beneficial for that kind of person because his lifestyle is oriented towards uh, spiritual things spiritual pursuits so activities which are in line with that obviously will uh, benefit him more and more because it will fit with his lifestyle uh, such as doing meditation and prayers etc so this is these are some of the ways by which you can do this person activity fitness to find out the best activity which promotes your happiness now positive activity interventions so this is a term that is used for intentional activities but intentional activities by uh, the term itself may mean you know activities which may not be just for happiness so any activities it means so positive activity inter uh, or activities are this is the term that is used to mean only those activities which are conducive for enhancing happiness level or well being so positive activities are basically simple intentional regular practices that mimic the healthy thoughts and behaviors associated with naturally happy people so these are the activities that uh, research shows you know uh, that are beneficial for enhancing happiness and they mimic uh, the thoughts and behaviors of naturally healthy people or naturally happy people so people who are naturally happy so they are kind of this happy temperament is there uh, they show certain characteristics and a positive activities are basically kind of uh, used to mimic that for example you know uh, people who are naturally happy they show more gratitude they are generally more thankful towards life and people who contribute in their life and uh, they show a lot of optimistic thinking they also do lot of pro social behavior or helping behaviors so positive activities basically include this kind of behaviors which mimics the behaviors and thoughts of hel uh, happy happy people and which promotes happiness uh, in our life so let us see more about this uh, positive activity interventions or some of the specific activities so there are varieties of positive activities uh, in terms of interventions research have been uh, done on varieties of positive activities or positive intentional activities for increasing well being and happiness and uh, reducing negative symptoms you know so a lot of research uh, nowadays people are conducting in the area of positive psychology uh, to understand the efficacy or implications of various positive activities uh, and whether they really enhance happiness or not or sustainably increase happiness or not so these are some of the examples of such activities uh, we will look more into each of these activities in the upcoming uh, modules uh, but let us see what are some of these things so various randomized controlled intervention studies uh, showed that for example you know positive these are examples of positive intentional activities or positive activities in general uh, writing letters of gratitude so lot of research shows that you know people uh, if they are asked to write letters of gratitude to people uh, whom for whom you know they are grateful for something so that increases you know happiness level significantly to the people so great letters of gratitude you know basically expressing gratitude in general shows that people who express gratitude more uh, to the people or to whatever you know life situations or in general maybe to the nature or god or whatever it is so the more we express gratitude gratitude expression of gratitude immediately enhances our positive emotions you know we become happier so in general if you see you know most of the time we are uh, our mindset or human mindset is conditioned in such a way that we focus more on uh, you know uh, things that are you know uh, negative or things that we are we 
we, we, we complain about. So our focus mostly goes on. So you may, 10 things may be good in your life, but one thing is wrong, your whole focus will go there. Primarily because it, you know, this is how our mind is conditioned, you know. We will complaining about those, that one particular wrong thing that has happened in our life. So if you keep on complaining and the moment you start complaining, the negative emotions comes and your happiness decreases. So the expression of gratitude does the opposite of complaining. So you just intentionally you know, train your mind to look into things for which you should be grateful. So life, you may be grateful for so many things, you know. So it could be, you know, for people around you or who is supporting you. Uh, you may be grateful for various uh, skills and abilities that you have. You may be grateful for the life situations that are given to you, you know. Uh, you may get so many, you know, fortunate things in your life in terms of money or in terms of materials, whatever it is. So there may be many things you can look at where no, you, sh you can be grateful, but we generally don't focus on the things for which we should be grateful. We focus more on things for which we should complain. So expressing gratitude is a part of this exercise where you consciously shift because that is intentional activity means you need to put effort because our mind naturally goes into complaining. So you need to shift it consciously. So you shift your attention to the things for which you sh should be grateful. The moment you look into those things, uh, positive emotions comes and you become much more happier. And this happiness actually is significant and it, if you keep on doing it, your, that it will be maintained. So writing letters of gratitude, a uh, uh, lot of research shows, it could be writing letters or it could be uh, you know, expressing directly to a person. All this uh, actually enhances happiness level. These are research findings. Another activities which was found to be, you know, uh, beneficial uh, is counting one's blessing. So again, it is connected to gratitude actually. So counting one blessing is again you see uh, the things for which uh, you know, uh, you know, you think you are you should you are blessed in your life. So mostly the uh, things for which you should be grateful for. So it is again a part of kind of gratitude exercise only. So as I have said, you can be you know feel blessed for so many things in your life. Uh, so especially in the in the crisis situation or difficult situations, uh, counting one blessing could be an important strategy for coping also. And uh, such um, uh, interventions actually uh, research indicates people happiness level or positive emotions increases after doing such kind of activities. And the next is is practicing optimism is another thing. Optimism is basically you look at the, you know, the, uh, the bright possibilities or positive possibilities in the, in your life. So about particularly in the future events. So you always think that, you know, you hope for the best that some positive outcomes are going to happen. So practicing optimism is also found to be very important for, you know, coping with various difficulties of life and also making a sense of resilience. Because the moment you lose hope and you become pessimistic, uh, you will not have any energy and motivation to do anything. So becoming optimistic and cultivating that optimistic even in difficult situation is something very important that one can cultivate uh, by practicing and it has shown a lot of benefits in terms of increasing our sense of resilience, increasing happiness and positive emotions. The next is uh, performing acts of kindness. Also research shows that you know, uh, the more you perform kinds, uh, acts of kindness, uh, the more you are likely to be happier. So kindness basically refers to any acts that you uh, do uh, or that is intended to benefit others. So it could be any kind of acts which you are basically the, your intention is to benefit someone else. So all these activities can be called as acts of kindness. So this acts of kindness is something an universal you know, virtue. If you go to any culture, acts of kindness will be kind of considered one of the highest virtue and it is considered as, you know, uh, the basis of our individual as well as collective happiness. Because if people become unkind in society, whole so society as a whole will become very, you know, full of suffering and unhappiness. So kindness is so important not only just for your individual happiness, but it is also important for your collective, for our collective social 
or even global happiness. Uh, without that, you know, we lose that cohesiveness or the connection with people. It is lack of kindness that is causing so much of destruction. So, performing acts of kindness is very important and uh, acts of kindness need not be like all, uh, like should not be a great work of charity or something. It could be simple things, you know, if, even if you smile at somebody, uh, it will kind of induce some positivity to other person or if you say a few words of encouragement or if you say thank you to someone, these are also small acts, but these are all acts of kindness because your intention is to, you know, benefit other person. So, uh, acts of kindness, you know, should not be looked at like grand acts of charity or something. It could be very simple thing that everybody can do. So, such simple acts of kindness also showed that, you know, the more people do them, uh, their happiness also increases. Another thing is using one's strength in new ways. Everybody has a lot of signature strengths and, you know, talents that people may have. Sometimes people realize their strength and talents a little bit later in their life. Sometimes people realize them early in their life, but we all have different kinds of talents and strengths. So, when we are talking about strengths, it need not be just, you know, kind of mental strengths or, you know, abilities of mind or something. Uh, we could have, you know, you know, becoming, you know, for example, somebody may have strength in terms of empathy or emotional connection with other people. So, strengths could be of so many varieties of you, it need not be only intellectual kind of strengths. So, the, uh, if the more we use our strengths and talents, uh, the we are more, more likely to become happier because if we have certain strength, the idea is that, you know, it keep, it, it uh, the moment we do that, it will en enhance our happiness because we are good at it. it. It increases our sense of competence, sense of our ability, sense of our efficacy. So, using signature strengths and not just, you know, variety in varieties of ways and varieties of life situations. Uh, the more you use them in varieties of life situation, uh, the more you are likely to be happier and uh, feel more capable and competent. Uh, so, this is also another important thing. Uh, another thing is affirming one's most important values. Uh, affirmation of values are also very important. No? We all have different kinds of values, uh, you know, uh, uh, which we find personally meaningful. And uh, so, we affirmation of values means we can reflect on these values. Uh, what are the important values in my life? And um, and reflecting on them, and we if we if we more and more incorporate them in our life, we are more the more we likely to become happier. So, uh, affirming values, so many values could be there. You know, people may have spiritual values, religious values. People may have uh, values such as you know. Uh, related to their friends and families, they want to, you know, they give a lot of values to, in, you know, maintaining those relationships. Uh, and it could be, you know, somebody may have romantic values, somebody may have values for social skills. So, we, people may have different kinds of values, they, which they assign a lot of significance and meaning to them. So, if you find something is valuable in your life, you try to incorporate them more and more. Uh, obviously, those values has to be positive in the sense, you know, they should facilitate your life, not kind of, you know, decrease. Uh, so, facilitative values are very important and you know, one can, uh, the more you incorporate them in your life, uh, the better it is in terms of enhancing your happiness. Uh, and the last one is meditation. Obviously, we have looked into meditation in more, you know, in a much more detail in full, full one lecture while discussing coping strategies. So, meditation and mindfulness obviously, we have seen is one of the important ways of uh, finding happiness within. Uh, so, the best part of uh, meditation or mindfulness exercises are that, you know, you can find your source of happiness within yourself without really depending on the outer circumstances. So, so basically, you learn to tackle your mind in such a way that, you know, because inherently there is a joy and happiness within us. It is only thing is our mental, you know, disturbances and uh, you know, ruminative thoughts which is creating lot of suffering. So, if you learn to handle that, uh, joy and happiness automatically flows out of it. So, meditation helps you in that. So, you kind of become happy in your own nature, uh, find that source uh, and uh, really, you know, you do not need much from the outside world. So, in that way, meditation is unique in finding happiness and coping with different problems of life. So, all these uh, practices are actually brief, self, uh, can be self administered, 
you do not have to really need a professional uh, guidance for this. Uh, at once you understand them and these are all cost effective and uh, research shows all these things actually in enhances our happiness level sustainably. Now, all these uh, uh, positive activities or intentional activities uh, works, how they work, what is the mechanism by which it works? If they work by promoting positive feelings, all of these activities actually they promote positive feelings or emotions, positive thoughts. So, if thoughts and emotions are actually directly connected to each other, positive emotions stimulates positive thoughts, positive thoughts stimulates positive emotions. So, they are directly connected to each other. So, positive feelings, positive thoughts and positive behavior. So, if your thoughts and uh, emotions are positive, obviously your behaviors will be in line with that. It cannot be other way. And these activities do not focus on negative and uh, correcting negative thoughts or negative beliefs. So, this uh, disorder and other things, the focus is not to correct these things. Focus is enhancing positive emotions. So, then the negative part automatically is taken care. So, as we have already discussed, you know, stimulating positive emotions, it basically, you know, it kind of stimul or un it kind of, you know, eradicates all the uh, effects of negative emotions in terms of in our body and mind. So, if you work towards those positive emotions, thoughts, negative uh, disorder, pathological feelings will automatically, you know, be eradic eradicated simply because, you know, they are kind of counter to each other. Uh, a meta-analysis of 51 uh, studies controlled, uh, uh, randomized controlled intervention studies found that, you know, people who engage in positive, sorry, positive intentional activities such as thinking gratefully, optimistically and mindfully become significantly happier. So, it is not just one or two studies, you know, it is a meta-analysis on 51 studies and all showed that these positive activities uh, actually enhances sustainably our happiness level. Now, let us see what are uh, the factors that affect success of positive activities, you know. So, as I said, you know, it is not just, you know, doing some activity and uh, so some of the important factors that can determine whether it will, uh, the benefits of it, you know, to what extent it will benefit somebody. So, there may be many factors to it. Uh, so, one of the thing is that what is the, what are the characteristics of the activity that you are doing? So, what is the frequency of activity that you are doing? So, one thing is frequency of the activity. Obviously, you know, uh, generally uh, for a lot of positive activities, the research shows at least once in a week if you do, let us say, you know, practicing gratitude or this kind of thing. Even one, doing once in a week can show a lot of benefits to, benefits in terms of uh, doing this kind of activities. So, obviously, you know, for some activities, uh, the more you do, it is better. For example, you know, the, the practice of meditation and other thing, if you do it regularly every day, it the impact will be much better. For some activity, even if you do it for once in a week, you know, uh, uh, it shows its effect. And the second important thing is variety. So, doing things in a var varieties of ways is very important in terms of enhancing happiness. Simply, if, if you change or vari uh, include variety in it, it is, you know, the hedonic adaptation is le less likely to happen. You are less like likely to get adapted to them. So, the same activity you can do in varieties of ways, as I have said, you know, uh, given an example in terms of gratitude or you can do multiple of other varieties of activities together. You know, you can do not just one activity, you can do uh, many other activities. You can practice, you know, uh, gratitude exercises, you can do acts of kindness, you can do meditations, so many other activities actually you can do. So, varieties of activities, again it will, you know, uh, reduce the hedonic adaptation. So, certain characteristics like, you know, what is the frequency of that activity, are you doing it in a varieties of way or varieties of activities. So, that will also determine whether, you know, it is bringing about uh, the positive impact or not. Then the characteristics of the person itself is also very important. As we have said, people differ in their values, in their you know, belief system, in their personality traits, uh, in their motivation, in their efforts. So, all this will determine whether the person will get benefit from it or not. For example, in a motivation, without motivation you cannot do any intentional activities because effort is needed in it. So, you need to be motivated to bring changes in your life. So, first you need to have this motivation that I want increase our my, you know, 
emotional experiences of life, then only you, you will be able to put effort uh, in that direction. Uh, you need to believe that it will work and um, then once you start doing it, if you see benefit automatically, I mean that belief will be strengthened. And a personality trait, what kind of person you are also will determine as we have seen. Uh, for extrovert people will uh, may need certain different kinds of activities, introvert may need different kinds of activities. So, all these factors actually may uh, determine whether activity or activity will lead to positive benefit or not. Then obviously, person activity fit which we have already discussed, it should match the activity and the personal characteristics should match in order to bring out the best benefit out of it. So, uh, we can just draw uh, this positive activity model, uh, what are the factors that inter, uh, you know, does or bring about changes. We can show it in a diagrammatic way, for example, uh, let us see. So, positive activities it brings about increased well-being or happiness. How it brings about this? Let us see some of the factors that can come in between positive activity and in terms of understanding mechanism. So, positive activity what it does? One thing it does that you know, it uh, brings about positive emotions. positive thoughts, positive behavior, and even you know certain it satisfied certain psychological need also. And these positive changes bring about increased well being and happiness. So, these are mediators. So, this is the model proposed by uh, Sonja uh, in, uh, in one of the paper where she discussed you know how these positive activities brings about changes or increase in happiness. So, one thing is that positive activity brings about these changes and these changes brings about uh, increase well-being or happiness. And there are many moderators or other factors that influence whether positive activity will lead to uh, increase well-being or not. These factors include you know characteristics of activity itself. whatever activity you are doing, what are the characteristics of that activity. It may include as I say, you know, what, are, what are the frequency, varieties. So, this is kind of uh, one set of factors. Another set of factors is characteristics of the person. which include motivation, efforts, 
beliefs personality traits and whether there is a fit between these two so person activity fit whether they fit with each other this is also important factors so all these factors actually you know <coughs> will influence this relationship. So, characteristics of the activity, characteristics of the person and the person activity fit will moderate this relationship means it will influence whether it will bring about higher happiness or not so higher. And these factors like you know positive um, uh, emotions, positive thoughts, positive behaviors, need satisfaction these are like mechanisms you know doing after doing positive activity this will induce these things in, within us and they will ultimately lead to higher well-being and happiness so these are called as you know kind of uh, no, mediators and these are called as kind of you know moderators so this is uh, the po uh, is a model that explains how positive activity can bring about increase well-being and happiness and what are the factors that may influence this relationship. So, mechanisms uh, if you just look little bit you know, more into this. So, how it brings about changes is that positive activities are positive, they are positive of for an individual only to the extent that they stimulate increase in positive emotions, thoughts, behaviors and they satisfy certain needs. Uh, psychological needs, uh, we have certain psychological needs such as you know need to feel autonomous, need to feel connected with people. So, uh, all, all this or need to feel competent. So, all these things actually happens after doing positive um, activities and which in turn increases happiness. See these are some of the possible pathways. Some studies uh, reported you know positive emotions experience as a result of for example, you know meditation, uh, nurtured personal resources such as social relationship, physical health which in turn increase life satisfaction. So, for example, you know research shows uh, especially research in uh, who looked into the effect of meditation where they found people who do regular meditation their positive emotions are higher. And uh, when you experience more positive emotions, you are, your relationships will also uh, be much better in satisfying and simply because you know you will be more you know, better connected to people because it is the destructive emotion that you know creates conflicts in relationships. If you are having more positive emotions, you will have better relationship with people which will increase your life satisfaction and happiness. Uh, studies also show that expressing you know gratitude and optimism increase self reported autonomy and relatedness which in turn increase life satisfaction so doing certain activities such as gratitude and optimism also in you know fulfill certain psychological needs such as feeling of autonomy you know you feel you are not constrained by outside forces you are doing things on your own uh, so those needs are fulfilled you feel more related to people because you express gratitude towards somebody you are you also have a positive then relationship with those people. So, all these basic needs are also fulfilled which in turn increases your life satisfaction and happiness. So, the specific uh, positive intentional activities uh, we will discuss um, for enhancing happiness in the next module uh, next few modules we will discuss specific activities and we will uh, discuss more about it. for example, gratitude we will have one lecture on gratitude, acts of kindness we will have one lecture on acts of kindness will have you know maybe maybe about two lectures on uh, using signature strengths so like this we'll discuss specific activities one by one in the upcoming modules uh, in this module we discussed more about and addressed specifically about can we increase happiness and research shows despite there are barriers inherent barriers in our system such as genetic composition personality trait and hedonic adaptation there is a uh, uh, significant possibility of enhancing our happiness level particularly using intentional activities or positive activities. 
and we will discuss these positive activities in more details uh, specifically in the upcoming uh, lectures. So, with this I end uh, today's lecture here, thank you.